Hello viewers, we'll be going over the S&P 500 ETF ticker symbol SPY. In this video, we'll be going over the day-by-day -day probability model, the percent comparison, how we find the models, and the day-by-day -day forecast for the S&P 500. So back to the technical analysis. Today we're up 1.7% on the one hour chart. We were oversold on Thursday and we start to approach to positive MACD on the one hour chart. If we expand that to the four hour chart, we were also oversold on the four hour RSI. We start to see a convergence on the four hour MACD and we may see a support level on the nine moving average. If we expand out further on the daily chart, we're still oversold on the daily RSI. We are nowhere near a convergence on the daily MACD. So that is a bit concerning that we would not see a possible reversal in play in the next few hours. So to do take that in consideration, this drop may take several weeks to recover. And as for support, the next possible support, if we do fail to close above the weeks, the 200 day moving average or 200 week moving average, this green line, if we close below that, that is a bit concerning because the next support will be where we made back, back in December of 2018 at around the price or December 26, 2018. So that is our immediate support if we do do not close above that 200 week moving average. That again, that is around the price of $234.50. And as for resistance, we still have to retrace back to the nine day moving average this will act as our resistance and that is around $283.30 as our immediate resistance if we do manage to reverse higher. So if we do fall or climb higher, that price movement is roughly around 11.8% to the upside and to the downside, it is around 7.2% to the support level back in December 2018. So back to the day-by-day -day probability model. Again, this model is now available in the link below, so do check it out. So right now, as the days progress to the seventh day, we have a 100% chance for the S&P 500 to climb higher between zero and 1.3%. The reason why we have 100% chance is that we only have one sample to base this model on and let's go day by day where the S&P 500 will head to the next coming days. So we have one day out, two days out, three days out, four days out, five days out, six days out, and seven days out. So let's examine this model closely. So as we compare the current trend right here, and below is the trend that I believe is the best match. That trend is November 9th, 2001 to February 7th, 2002. So let me point out why these two charts are similar. So what we have here in the current trend, we average above the middle Bollinger Band. We take a slight dip below the middle Bollinger Band. And then we proceeded to continue averaging above the middle Bollinger Band at this instance. And then right towards the very end, we break out into a severe downtrend, pretty much over exceeding expectations. <laughs> so we have those points right there. Now let's examine the trend in question. We average above the middle Bollinger Band. And then next we take a slight dip below the middle Bollinger Band and we have the instance there and finally we average once more for several days and then finally right towards the bare end we break down to touch the bottom bollinger band so we have those points there what we have is one two three four points we also have 
one, two, three, four points. So there is reason to believe that the trends and patterns are the same. The outcome and forecast should be fairly the same. So the model that we just examined was November 9th, 2001 to February 7th, 2002. Back then, the S&P 500 was up around 62 basis points, slightly higher from where we are currently at. So let's just examine more closely on the technical side. So the trend we are currently at is 23% down from monthly high, 0% from monthly low, and we are 9% down from simple moving average 10, and 14% down from 20 moving average, and 15% down from 50 moving average. And the trend in question that we just examined was down 9% from monthly high, 0% from monthly low, 3% down from 10 moving average, 4% down from 20 moving average, and 5% down from 50 moving average. So the trend that we are currently at is more a larger percent drop than the trend that we just examined. So do take that into consideration. So that is one thing to note when we're forecasting and comparing trends. And again, this model is now available in the link below, so do check it out. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.